Hello and welcome. Our message today comes from Jude. I'll be reading from chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, and verse 17 to verse 22. Come, let us hear the word of our Lord. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. But, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow their natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy mixed with fear hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Thanks be to God for his holy word. So here we have Jude writing to the church, and Jude is uh, probably one of the shorter books of the Bible, just one chapter. But in this handful of verses, Jude writes to urge the church to continue to hold on to their faith, uh, to defend their faith, and defend the faith that has been passed down to them. Uh, He's writing to the second generation of believers. These were people that might have even grown up around believers, grown up in the church. Maybe their parents or their grandparents came to faith in Jesus Christ, and they too were raised up in the truth, and he's writing to them. But in his letter, he says he wanted to write to them about a completely different topic, a completely different subject. He says, I long to write to you about our salvation. And so maybe there was something about salvation that he wanted to write to them about, but he felt that there was an even more urgent matter that he had to write to them about, which was about defending their faith. He felt that their faith was gonna be under attack. And there was a real and present threat against the faith that they had. So he wants them to stand strong in their faith to be able to withstand the assaults that he saw that were happening within the church. And maybe just like the people that Jude is writing to us, we too might be that second or third generation Christian. We're people that have uh, had a faith that was given to us and entrusted to uh, to us by our parents, by our grandparents. Maybe your grandparents uh, served the churches in the Middle East faithfully. Maybe you grew up in the church with your parents taking you to church. And that is a rich inheritance and a blessing that we have in our lives. Uh, something that we are able to enjoy and cherish and make our own as well. Jude appreciates that, but he also sees a danger that those that have, in a sense, inherited the faith that have grown around the church might stand and be threatened by dangers from the inside and outside in a different way. And so he wants them to stand firm in their faith, to be extra diligent, to stand strong, not take things for granted or else they might fall to the attacks of the enemy. Uh, Jude tells them that they need to not only have faith, but to understand the faith which they have. Uh, It's easy for us when we grow up in the church to know what faith is, to say that we have faith, to believe these things, but do we truly understand why we believe these things or why we have the faith that we have? We might take it for granted at times, but Jude wants his readers to be ready and cautious uh, to stand firm for their faith, to not only believe but to truly understand their faith. That having faith isn't just the end of their spiritual journey, but the beginning of their spiritual lives. He wants their faith to grow and become stronger as they continue to learn about their faith and be clear on why they believe what they believe. He wants their faith to grow stronger and to be able to stand firm. And as the apostle Peter writes in his letter in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, to always be ready to give a defense for the hope that is in you. And that's what Jude wants his readers to be able to do. Not that they believe, but also to be able to explain why they believe what they believe, to defend the faith that they have, and to make sure it continues to grow and be strong uh, as they continue to live their lives and walk in faith. Second, Jude sees that there are threats to this faith 
externally and internally as well. Of course, the world wants to diminish our faith, wants to talk down to our faith, wants to undermine our faith. And that's no surprise. We know the world is against the things of God. It is against the things that we stand for and that we believe. So it's no surprise to us when we face the world and uh, feel the world pushing back on us. It's to be expected. But Jude makes it clear that there are also threats from within, that there are people that are wolves in sheep's clothing that have snuck in to lead people astray. Uh, Paul also warns Timothy in his letter that at the end times there will be people that will rise up. There will be people will in fact put leaders uh, of themselves and, and place leaders over themselves that will, as uh, Paul describes, tickle their ears and tell them what they want to hear. And so they will be able to give in to their own desires rather than walking the narrow path of faith. So Jude is aware that there is a danger where, where we are in a community that is a little insular and that we must be careful into who it is that we give authority and listen to. There could be wolves in sheep's clothing that want to lead us astray. Or there might be people trying to put other people in leadership so that they can hear what they want to hear rather than what they need to hear. So we must be vigilant to defend the faith and defend the truth of the Bible, to look at God's word. And even if it criticizes us or even if it shines a light into our sin, understand that it is doing that in order to help us and to heal us and to allow us to grow. And so Jude wants his readers to be diligent not only to defend the faith, but also protect the faith and protect the fold from those that come to lead the sheep astray. Lastly, uh, Jude wants his readers to build their life on the foundation of their faith. Jude wants uh, the foundation of their entire life to be based on their faith, that their faith isn't just one part of their life, their faith isn't just something that they add on to the different aspects of their life, but it is really the foundation of what they build their life on. So whether it's your career, whether it's your leisure time, whether it's your family, whether it's your friendships, whatever part of your life has that it must be built on the foundation of faith, not just have faith added to these things. Uh, he wants them to have such a solid foundation that they are able to deal with these attacks and these dangers. But he understands people are human and he wants us to be merciful to one another. Sure, we're all gonna have some doubts. We're gonna doubt these things, but we are in a community that we can encourage one another and we can help one another in our struggles and our doubts. When we build our life on that foundation of faith, the doubts that come won't be as dev devastating to our lives. If we build our lives on other things, then when a doubt comes like a torpedo, it's just gonna destroy uh, what is underneath and it's all gonna come collapsing and falling down. But Jude wants us to have our lives built on the rock of our faith in Jesus Christ. So even when doubts come, even when Satan throws doubts in our way, we won't crumble and we won't fall. He wants us to be merciful uh, to those that do have doubts, uh, merciful to those that are struggling with sin, to be active into rescuing them, but to be careful and to approach it with some kind of fear, knowing that sin truly is a weight that will pull us down and drag down our faith. Uh, we're called to act mercifully toward one another and lovingly toward one another, but to take sin and doubt seriously, knowing that they can be dangerous and undermine the faith that we are trying to protect and the faith that we are trying to grow. Ultimately, Jude sees our faith as a precious light, and whether you have received that faith, that light from generation to generation, we have to make it our own. It has to be our light that we carry, that God has given to us, and we're called to protect that light, to allow that light to grow, and to preserve that light so it shines into the world and shines God's light and God's love. Amen.